Happy New Year everybody. I uh, really just wanted to share a story with you in this video. Uh, it's very much related to the very last video I made of last year on, on Christmas Eve. Um, the subject of the video, if you haven't seen it, uh, well I'll put a link to that video in the description box of this video, but the subject of that video was the importance of uh, cultivating our hearts as an organ of perception and using our hearts to actually connect with nature, to, to interface with our natural environment that we're a part of and the kind of communication that can take place between us and nature and the earth and the plants and the animals, the kind of communication, the two-way communication that can take place when we allow ourselves to really let our guard down and open up our hearts in that way. And while I was making that video, I came across some mushrooms that I hadn't seen before. I was completely unfamiliar with them. I didn't know what they were, but they looked very nice. And so I incorporated them into my previous video, the, the last video I made just before this one. And what was quite poetic about that experience was that that whole morning of Christmas Eve that I was walking through the woods making that video, I felt completely connected to, to the forest, probably more than I ever have done. Uh, I really felt like I was a part of the forest. I felt like I was an integral piece of the forest ecosystem. I felt very, very connected to my surroundings uh, to the point where a recently shed deer antler was brought to me by my dog. She just dropped it at my feet and it still had a bit of blood pouring out of the the base, a little bit of blood coming out of the marrow, so it obviously just, literally just dropped. And yeah, it was a very magical experience, but I came across these mushrooms and while I was filming them, and while I was spending a little bit of time around them, uh, the Latin name Flamulina Volutipes was just repeating itself over and over in my head as if it had been placed in my mind. It wasn't really something I was familiar with at all, and that that name was just going round and round in my head the whole time I was with these mushrooms. Now, obviously, I just carried on and you know walked around the forest and carried on filming my video. When I got home, I actually looked that name up to see if it existed, and it did exist. It does exist. It's actually the Latin name of those mushrooms. Uh, and so when I'm saying telepathy, I'm not really saying, you know, that I sat down and had a kind of long-winded conversation with the mushrooms or, you know, we weren't sharing stories with each other, but the simple act of being able to open up our hearts and connect with our natural environment can really reveal a lot of information, a lot of truth, and a lot of wisdom, and a lot of sharing of wisdom in this way. And this is not something new, I mean, I'm not... This is not exactly a revelation to me. I've been connecting with my surroundings in this way for a while now. I've made videos on this previously. I'll also stick a link to a video I made probably, you know, nearly a year ago now where I was looking for medicinal mushrooms in the forest. I'd spent so long doing it and in the end, you know, I was just about to give up. And I came across a herd of deer and the deer actually directed me to a very large flush of turkey tail mushrooms. So in that way, I, you know, it's, it's the same kind of story, just connecting with the immediate ecosystem and actually allowing the wisdom of the ecosystem to be shared with you so that you can better connect and navigate that ecosystem and actually sustain yourself from it. So I'll put a link to that video in the description box as well. So these are the mushrooms that communicated their name to me. Now, I'm showing you a photo of them. These these were the exact ones that I filmed in my previous video, so this is, you know, th these were the specific mushrooms that actually communicated this message to me. But the thing is, those mushrooms, there was, there was actually about three flushes of these mushrooms, really quite dense, a lot of them, and those have all actually gone now. This is only, you know, a week or so later, but they've all gone. They haven't been picked. They've actually 
I'll show you in a moment, but they've actually been chewed off the tree. So I'm because there's a real shortage of food around this time of year in the wilderness, and there's a lot of wild animals around here, in particular a lot of deer, I would imagine that the deer have actually been coming in here and eating them off the tree. There are some other flushes, not quite as impressive, but I can show you those in a moment. Um, but basically I look these mushrooms up and they are very, very effective immune modulating mushrooms and they have very pronounced anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties. Uh, they're very powerful antibacterial, anti-pathogenic bacteria mushrooms. They're absolutely unbelievably amazing. Uh, what, what surprised me was that these are actually the wild origins of Inokitaki mushrooms, which are a type of cultivated medicinal and edible mushroom that originates from Japan. And I've had those many times. I'm not overly learned about them, but you know, I, I know the basics of them and I'm familiar with them. I've eaten them fairly regularly. Uh, but they look absolutely nothing at all like these mushrooms. Like this is Inokitaki. This is the standard kind of cultivated Inokitaki mushrooms that you're going to buy, that you're going to find, you know, in, in shops, online, whatever. This is the Inokitaki cultivated equivalent of this wild Flamulina volutipes that I'm showing you in the forest here. Um, so you can see that they're not at all alike, so there's absolutely no way I could have mistaken these wild mushrooms for this cultivated Inokitaki, and I hadn't, I hadn't memorized the Latin name for Inokitaki, and anyway, even if I had, they don't resemble each other at all, so this was, in, in my mind, without question, uh, definitely a direct perception and direct communication with nature, which we are all capable of. So here you can see They've been chewed off. Nobody's picked these. You can see nobody's picked these. There's like... They've, they've obviously been chewed off the tree, so I, I would imagine that that's deer. That's hungry deer. They're wandering into the, the thickness of the forest here, where it gets quite densely overgrown, and they're looking for food to eat. Or, rather, the mushrooms are communicating to the deer that they're in here so that the deer can nourish themselves. This tree was absolutely covered. It probably had about a hundred of these on it. You can see now, you know, there's really just like two or three intact. The rest of them have all been nibbled off. Fortunately though, if you persevere, there are still some. You can see here, some pretty good specimens here. So they're quite soft, fleshy, fleshy mushrooms. I'm not really going to cover any of the uh, identification do's and don'ts and the dangerous look-alikes. There are a couple of dangerous look-alikes. One or two of them are actually deadly, so <clears throat> definitely do your homework before you come out here and pick any. They're very beautiful mushrooms. So they're perfectly edible, they're very highly nutritious. From what I can gather, most of the medicinal compounds are water soluble. So, very easy to extract and, and use, you know, you can just cook them, cook them into soups, dry them, make teas with them, whatever. But really, really amazing. They, they only really come out in the depths of winter, so while there's really nothing else around, these mushrooms are actually thriving and they're quite unique in that they can actually withstand severe sub-zero temperatures and still survive and release spores afterwards. They actually have their own kind of inbuilt fungal antifreeze that stops them from being damaged by, by that kind of very frigid environment. So this kind of heart opening process and connecting intimately in a heart-centered way with our natural surroundings and our natural environment. For me that's really one of the most 
uh, critically important aspects of our human progress, of our human development and our evolution as a species. That's something that is very, very key at this time. Definitely for me personally, I don't think that that's really just applying to me as an individual. I think that's a very broad spectrum reality for, for all of us. And I think rather than focusing our attention on external change all the time and expecting, you know, big Hollywood scale events to take place that are going to change the course of human, the human trajectory, I think if we actually look more uh, internally and collectively as a community and we really work on developing our heart the cognition of our hearts and the feeling capacity of our hearts and we really work on ourselves in that way and connect more with the earth that's actually sustaining life here uh, that's really laying the ultimate foundations for any kind of spiritual advancement to ever ever take place now this is something I've covered in a few videos recently uh, I definitely recommend going and watching my last video uh, that is a kind of precursor to this one. It's only about five minutes long. It's really not a big deal. It's, you know, it just shows the kind of forest environment that I live in, and it was filmed on Christmas Eve morning. It's really quite a picturesque video. It's really quite a nice one. And the, the commentary in that video really kind of elaborates more on this whole idea. But um, I really just wanted to share this because... You know, for a lot of people, the idea of actually talking to plants or talking with mushrooms or talking with animals in this way, actually having an intelligent communication with these other forms of life, to some people that's just ridiculous. You know, it's it's completely laughable. And, you know, at some point it was to me too. I, it was absolutely absurd that that could be a possibility. But my, my, my current experience and my experience that's actually been developing and building for a while now uh, really conclusively suggests otherwise and you know all of these all of this life it's all sentient it may not be sentient in the same way that we are it may not be able to open its mouth and communicate instantaneous thoughts and feelings but that's the difference once we kind of migrate out of the brain out of the the analytical, logical aspects of our mind, and we migrate more towards that open-hearted feeling state, we realize that there's a whole wealth of knowledge, wisdom, and communication that we've been otherwise completely ignorant and blind to. And that kind of connection with nature, that kind of heart-centered openness with all life actually gives us a much bigger agenda it gives us a much bigger motivation really in our lives so that we can actually conduct ourselves in a way that best serves everything rather than what's best for me what's going to actually sustain me is this good or bad for me rather than that very limited and narrow outlook and motivation once we connect in this open-hearted way we really do have a much more vast perspective on everything which itself is really a, a spiritually developed outlook and that can really change your life.